Hmm. Game just auto-saved. That's terrifying. Oh, hey, Jarvia. So, Paramount finally realized we're taking the city, yet he still can't be bothered to send his own men. Will you pick the wrong side, stranger? It doesn't matter who's king, as long as there's a queen. Man, you have really weird proportions because, like, you, you're a dwarf, so you've got the, the very long arms thing going on, but also they wanted to stick you in skin-tight sexy lady armor, but because of the whole dwarf, it's, it, it's just very weird. I'm going to hit both of these drops because they both apply here. Yeah, it's not great. Uh, listen, lady, you, you're very confident for someone who had 49 mooks and I have murdered 43 of them. You'll pay for their deaths a hundred times over. Kill them, but leave the pretty one alive. I have plans for her. Trap. Wait, which one's the pretty one? Uh, Me? Uh, Leliana? Uh, Morgan? This should be easy enough. It's presumably not Alistair. Let's get started. Right. Oh, hey, Alistair's dead. Begin the onslaught. On your guard. To me, I need help. As you wish. Let's get started. I'm wear your pretty, pretty teeth around my wrist. And now she's talking about my pretty, pretty teeth, which is a choice. Is that all you've got? Hi. Let's get started. Die. Attack. Jarvia commands you. Enough. Yeah, well, Jarvia gets murdered by me. Oh, she poofed away. I'm going to wear your pretty, pretty teeth around my wrist. You already said that. Hi there. On it. I am your death. Yeah, die. Only one shall stand. Hi, Jarvia. Oh, Morgan's dead. I never like uh oh. Trap. Come, you oh, and there are traps. Oh, and I'm dead. Oh, buddy. Uh oh. Uh oh. We've got trouble. Right here, River City. Trouble that starts with a capital T and that rhymes with D and that stands for I'm dead. Sad. Oh. Oh, why are Alistair and Liliana already dead? Oh. Does it have anything to do with the fire trap I just triggered? Right. No one challenges Jarvia and lives. I'm going to wear your pretty, pretty teeth around my wrist. Oh, this should be good. Let's get started. Murder him. You were the first one to bring me that scum's head. Trap. Tear them apart. You Let's will get learn to fear me. Attack. Jarvia commands you. Oh. Oh, Jarvia. Oh, boy. Oh. Okay. Well, now, now we're fucked. Now we're in trouble. Um. Listen. Okay. All right. That was going better until it wasn't. So. We're okay. So, Paramount finally realized we're taking the city. You've disappeared. Yes, All right, you over there, die. Perfume. I'm going to wear your pretty, pretty teeth around you my wrist. You cannot win. No, you there, die. Hi. Poultice. Run while you can. Ah! You're mine. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Swarm bees. Heish. Jima says this is more incentive to find the easiest setting for Inquisition when he plays it. I will tell you, Jeebus, I played Inquisition on, I think, normal difficulty, and there are some challenge modes that tweak difficulty in exchange for rewards, and I did not have this issue. You have to approach every game as its own thing. Dragon Age Inquisition is a very different game from Dragon Age Origins. Inquisition, I did not run into a brick wall nearly as often as I am in Origins. But again, this is piss easy baby mode. Easy difficulty. Easy difficulty. Doesn't matter. I'm going to turn off persistent gore. It's annoying. Show damage. Yeah. Okay. But in terms of like actual stacking of difficulty. Yeah. I played Inquisition on either normal or hard. I don't remember. Let's go. So, Paramount finally realized we're taking the city, yet he still can't be bothered to send his own men. Well, you picked the wrong side, stranger. It doesn't matter who's king, as long as there's a queen. You'll pay for their deaths a hundred times over. Kill them! But leave the pretty one alive. I have plans for her. Trap! It's a gotcha! No. <laughs> 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 Alright. You there, die. Let's go. This should be delightful. Is it just me, or do you actually think you have a chance? No mercy. It's either you or me, and it isn't gonna be me. Be careful. You there in the front, die. Alistair, heal yourself. Pin her. Cripple that guy. Hi there. No, don't hit me. Get dead. This is where. Oh, Alistair's already dead again. God damn it. Alistair. Jarvie is dead. Jarvie is dead. Okay. All right, Jarvie is dead. Her mooks are still alive. Okay. I feel better about this. You there, Carter Thug, go die. Come, you can do better than that. Wipe them out. One at a time. You must all die. Hey. You there must die. Dirty fighting. Kill him. Okay. Oh. Next. Oh. We're alive. We're still alive. Was that the last one? Alistair's up. That was the last one. We're victorious. <laughs> Oh, thank fuck. Lesser injury kit. Unbelievable. Oops. All right, we're going to save right here. Because good lord. Trap! I got an engraved silver bowl. Hooray. Let's get started. All right, can we disarm this trap, please? Now that I've seen it, no? Okay, fine then, don't trigger it. All right, that's the way out. This is a side room. This is a treasure room, actually. Dwarven longsword. Ice arrow and a love letter. Ooh. 
A love letter, you say? Wow. Let's see here. Promises of Pride, Correspondence Interruptus, Carved Elven Tablet. Hmm. Okay. Apparently that's not important. Great. Heroic offense for everyone. Good job, Morgan. As you wish. And this, one hopes, is the Skyrim door. Gather party, venture forth. God, by all the beards of my ancestors, how did you, where did you come from? You made a hole in my wall. I did, yes. Sorry about that. What will my customers think when they come in here and see this hole? There better not be more of your troublemaking kind crawling in after you. I swear, this city is going to the criminals and the nuts. Yeah, well, listen, I'm sorry, bud. Also, you have a quest? You again. Here to buy something, or were you just thinking of wrecking another part of my shop? Uh... Hey, do you have a daughter named Dagna? I... Has she been bothering you? It's a whiff of surface stink, and she's like a cave tick. Won't let go. Uh, she wants to... Uh, I'd like to help her study with the mages. Do you even know what that means? If Dagna goes to the surface, she forfeits her caste. She'll never be able to marry or, or work in Orzammar again. Dwarves don't do magic. Dagna knows that. It's just the childhood fantasy that dies hard. Please, if you see her, send her back and let me talk some sense into her. No! Why would I do that thing? I don't want to do that thing. Okay, so down there is... I think... So you're a... Okay. Off we go back into the commons. Hooray the commons. Okay. So... Let's, uh, let's go back to Prince Haramont, or Lord, Lord what's his mont Not Prince Haramont, but, uh, Dude King Totally Awesome Mont. Oh, there's a floor carving here. On it. I got 50 XP and a codex entry I'll never read. Hooray! Oh, hey, Dagna! Um, well, your dad wants me to- No, I'm not gonna tell her not to follow her dreams, because- well, I know she's an in Inquisition, and I don't want to create a world where she's not in Inquisition. So, we're not going to Dust Town. I want to go to the Diamond Quarter. Because that's where I have to go to get back to Haramont to tell him the good news about my succeeding in the death mission. Or something. I don't know. But I'm not telling Dagna not to follow her dreams, because Dagna's dreams rule. They're all about learning magic and doing dwarf shit and doing dwarf shit with magic which is fun and interesting and weird hello Adal Helmy you have come at a difficult time Orzammar is ailing for want of a king yeah I noticed all right Lord what Lord Balin swears revenge on Grey Wardens he is like a mad as you wish. Started. Right. Balin's guy is kind of an idiot, but whatever. Hey, Haramont! I advanced your quest. Send me into the deep roads, please. I heard the news. Jarvia and her Carter are dead. I suppose it was unrealistic to expect them to surrender. It was. It was, indeed, unrealistic. Hey, you want to go talk to the Assembly now? I have no desire to go back on my word. But when Balin heard the news about Jarvia, he raised the stakes. Uh -oh. He is forcing a vote in the next two days. By law, that prevents the Assembly from hearing any other pleas. To help with your troops, I will require your assistance one last time. Do you know anything of the Paragon Branca? Yes. I've, I've, I've heard the name, yes. Uh, you... Oh, yeah, apparently I heard about her new fuel thing. 
Yes, a smokeless fuel that made underground forges safer than they've ever been. Awesome. Two years ago, she took her entire house into the deep roads on a mad quest to uncover ancient secrets. No one's heard from her since. Were she to return and endorse someone for the throne, the assembly would be honor bound to accept her wishes. Cool. Um, are you sure she would support you? I mean, if you rescue her from the deep roads, that's... Uh, yeah, what if she's dead? Her entire house went with her. It would take a lot to kill so many. But it's if been not, two years. Bringing proof of her death or a body to return to the stone would still show that as an ancestor, it was my hand she guided to her remains. Okay, that's a fair point, actually. Um, if she's alive, would she support you? It's hard to say what she would do. She wasn't exactly known for her predictability. She never seemed to like being a paragon. She was devoted to her craft, never cared for politics. But one of the most brilliant minds Orzama has seen. Mm. Branka hated Darkspawn with a passion. She would certainly be a valuable voice to support your treaty. That's a fair point. Uh, yeah, sure, let's go get her. My men traced Branka's disappearance to an ancient crossroads known as Caradin's Cross. It is many miles below where we normally venture, but I can provide a map to lead you there. Just enter the deep roads through the mines. Thank you again, and may the ancestors guide your steps. Are you coming for this one, buddy? Like, are you gonna do a single goddamn thing to lift a finger to help your own cause, or are you just gonna send schmucks out to do your business for you? Cause we both know what the actual answer is. Leliana! Take uh, take three points of dexterity because I like you. And you get a skill. That skill can be... Uh, yeah, sure. Have combat tactics. And a talent for you. Your talent shall be... Uh, you have some archery talents, but I'm not using you as an archer rogue, so... Uh, I suppose I should give you some dual weapon talents given that you're a fucking dual weapon rogue here uh more proficient fighting with two weapons deals closer to normal damage bonus with the yeah okay here have that let's actually use her in the way she's intended amazing i know onward also i wonder if that uh Angry dwarf named Ogren is going to be happy that we're going to do the thing. I should probably go tell him. Oh, which I mean, go this way. Voice in support of Lord Harrowmont, the one true king of Orzammar. Hooray, the one true king of Orzammar, I guess. All right, where's the bar at? That's the item shop. That's a big house. That's Bronca. There! Booze Hut! There's an angry dwarf in Booze Hut. Oh, angry dwarf. Thought you should know, I'm looking for Bronca. Where'd you go? Buddy! Oh, does the game put you in my path? Was I trying to outsmart the game by going to find you when actually the game just puts you in my path and forces me to take you? I think that's what's happening here. Also, Morgan is constantly buffing us, which eh, could be worse, I suppose. Alistair never leveled up. That's right. Alistair, here. Take two more points of strength and one more point of constitution because you get, you get dead a lot, bud, actually. Uh, you get a skill, you can have more combat training. Oh, requires 12 cunning. Well, what's your cunning now? 11, huh? What if, uh, what if we do that? Combat training! And you get a talent. Uh, ooh, death blow. Each time the warrior fells an enemy, the end of the battle seems closer at hand, restoring a potion of stamina. That's good. Or, uh, precise striking is kind of neat, but... Shield expertise. Character's expertise using shield increasing the defense bonus for shield defense. Yeah, sure, fine. Here, do that. You're great at stuff. Jeebus says at this point he's put 160 hours, good lord, into Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Still have another DLC episode and questline to go. 
the level cap of that is 99, whereas in Valhalla, the level cap is 550. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Assassin's Creed games and really anything by, U by Ubisoft, I've heard, is... It gets super dense. There is a lot to do there if you like it. So, hey, I'm glad you like it. Uh, this is Dust Town, which is not where I wanted to go. I wanted to go to the other side and go down the mining roads. So, off we go. I've never really properly gotten into an Assassin's Creed game. I might or might not try at some point. I've heard good things about some and very bad things about others, and honestly, there are like 18 of them at this point, so yeah. But, you know, we'll be finished with either Origins or Andromeda soon enough. <sighs> there you are. I thought I'd spoken to a Grey Warden, but for some reason I chalked it up to the drink. Hi there. <sighs> I know you're down here to look for Bronca, and uh, I need to ask a favor. What's that? Uh, that's how you butter some. Everyone does. Yeah, you're Ogren. I've uh, we've met. You remembered. <laughs> I'm sodding touched. I guess now that Sir Upright and Honest thinks my Bronca's still alive, you're not so quick to say I'm crazy, huh? But yeah, well. They haven't found Bronca herself. And that means whatever they've got, it's not enough if you don't know what she was looking for. If we pool our knowledge, we stand a chance of finding Bronca. Otherwise, good sodding luck. Okay. Um... I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about this guy not behaving himself. I saw him get yelled at one time, and then I had an angry conversation with him. That's about it. You should know that Bronca was looking for the Anvil of the Void, the secret to building golems, which was lost centuries ago. The smith Caradin built it, and with it, Orzammar had a hundred years of peace while it was protected by the golems forged on the Anvil. Uh -huh. As far as anyone knows, the Anvil was built in the old Orton Taig. Okay. Bronca planned to start looking there, if she could ever find it. All she knew was that it was past Keridan's cross. No one's seen that tag for 500 years. Great. Awesome. Uh, listen, I've got a map. If we're going, let's get moving. Bronca's not gonna sodding find herself. Fair enough. Uh, also, we just let out a death scream for some reason. Okay, so this is Ogren. He's a warrior. And as we can see, he's ever so slightly higher leveled than, say, Alistair. So, oh, it. what if we just leave Alistair in the gray room of Nobody Comes Here and take Ogryn instead? Uh -huh. That's right, heroic offense scream. All right, now, let's look at uh, this character record for, say... Well, hold on here. Do you have spells and talents for Ogryn? Do you have anything to spend or are you just boom level 13? I think you're just boom level 13. Okay. Well, that being the case, let's go into your tactics here. So, Ogryn. Uh, yeah, you can activate Berserk, which sounds neat. Uh, enemy target has... A, all, all of this sounds, sounds well and truly great. Now, listen. If you have less than 50% health, I need you to use the least powerful health poultice available to you. Additionally, the enemy with the lowest health needs to get fucking murdered. Uh, here, do that. The enemy with the lowest health needs to get fucking murdered. Um, the enemy that is the target of the controlled party member needs to get fucking murdered. And lastly, if there is an enemy uh, attacking the controlled party member, uh, you need to fucking murder them. Okay? Okay, cool. Thanks, bud. I appreciate it. So we're going to save this game. Off we go. Wait. Ogren, do I happen to have any... I just got rid of a whole bunch of equipment, though. 
shit and shit and shit. Well, piss. Anyway, uh, you have a... Okay, so you're a two-handed axe guy. Cool. I don't really have much in the way of two-handed guys. I have a two-handed maul. Less damage, much less crit chance, much more armor penetration. Ooh. Plus three damage, plus two. Ooh. It does say plus two melee critical chance. I have nothing to which to compare it, though. Oh, it's red. I like the red. Okay, the red makes a difference here. So you can take that. Now, as for armor armor, you happen to not have a hat, so you can have, say, oh, stamina regeneration in combat. Yes. That sounds really good. Uh, yeah, you can take all of that. As for this armor, uh, nope, we like the Dwarven Heavy Armor for you. That's good. Accessories. Here, have an iron ring, just because we just met. Onward. Be careful out there. Okay, so you stopped me earlier, but you're not even going to say a word now. Got it. Into the mines! We're finally deeping the roads! Oh god! Oh god, there are multiple places we have to... Oh! Oh, the deep roads has its own world map. That's great. Why do we have to go to Iduken Tag? I'm sure there's a reason. Why are we here? All right, why are we at the Iduken Tag? Uh, we met a woman named Filda in the Orzammar Commons, praying for her son, Ruck. Filda does not know, okay, look for signs of Ruck. Sure, we can make that active. Uh, Circle of Magi, Orton Tag, that's not here. Orton Tag, that's not here. Orton Tag. Okay, so all of the plot stuff is looking for Orton Tag, but we're here at Iduken Tag. Which, sure, okay. There doesn't appear to be anything here. It's possible that this is a future plot relevant Tag that is not currently uh, meaningful in any way, actually. So, that's nice. Gather party, venture forth. Orton Tag, Keridin's Cross, yay! Ow, my lip. Ow, my lip. My lip, my lip, my lip. Keridin's Cross. Uh-huh. I can't believe Harrowmont actually tracked this place down. This used to be one of the biggest crossroads in the old empire. You could get anywhere from here, including Orton Taig. Okay. Now listen, I understand that we framed this shot with uh, Ogren in mind. However, putting Goog and especially Leliana in this shot with this framing is just... Well... That is all I have to say about that. Do you see the chick? Not a one. But trust me, we will once we're on the path to the old Orton Tag. She was going to Keridin's home. Okay. Um, what's so important about this Tag, though? It's the home of Keridin, the paragon who made the anvil. I see. He was an Orton before he founded his own house. And even then, he spent most of his time in their Tag. Ranka figured it was the best guess for where the anvil was located. Fair enough. This makes sense. Uh, tell me more about this anvil. No one but Keridin ever really knew more than it had some kind of stone-blessed power. Every golem who ever ranged across the Empire was hammered on the steel of that anvil. But no one ever knew exactly how they were made. But Bronco was sure she could find out. You know, the more we talk about golems, the more I realize that I should really bring Shale for this. So, 
Yeah, I should really be bringing shale for this, actually. So where do we go? Aye. Bronco dug up some maps of the ancient empire. It's a little tough to tell with so much of it collapsed now. But near as I can figure, we're on the right path to Orton Taig. Wonderful. Let's, uh, go then. I've been waiting for someone to say that for two sodding years. Okay. So, hey. Question. How do I change my party? Do I have to go all the way back out to... Hmm. Hmm. Alright, let's save right here. And see if I can figure this out. If I back out, gather party, venture forth, let's go back to Orzammar. Can I wide open world? Can I get to camp from here? Can I really get to the party campsite from here? Oh, all right, let's go to camp. This is one way to make sure we take the right team. It's also a good way to check in with people and figure out where Ogren's tent is. It's over there, apparently, and have Sten yell at us again. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. First, hi, Alistair. You know, maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about this, but I have something to ask you. Uh -huh. Chances are we'll be heading to Denerim soon. And when we're there, I wonder if we might be able to look someone up. Okay. Uh, who's that? I'm not talking about a friend, exactly. And no, it's not that sort of friend either. The thing is, I have a sister, a half-sister. I told you about my mother, right? She was a servant at Redcliffe Castle and she had a daughter. Only, I never knew about her. I don't think she knew about me either. They kept my birth a secret, after all. But, after I became a Great Warden, I did some checking and... Well... I found out she's still alive in Denerim. I see. Awesome. Have you reached out to her at all? You definitely haven't. No. I thought about writing her, but I never did. And then we were called down to Ostagar, and I never got the chance. She's the only real family I have left. The only family not also mixed up in the whole royal thing. I've just been thinking that maybe it's time I went to see her. With the blight coming and everything, I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance to see her. Maybe I can help her. Warn her about the danger, I don't know. I mean, I would think that living in Denerim, she has a decent handle on the fact that there's a blight and a civil war. But also, yeah, sure, we're going to have to go there eventually. Um, what do you think she'll do? I'm not sure. I don't know anything about her except her name and where she lives. Her name is Goldana, and I think she remarried but still lives just outside the alienage. If we're in the area, then, well, it's worth a look. Okay. So that's yet another thing to do when we ever get to Denerim and the game doesn't crash to the point where I scrap an entire stream's worth of hashtag content because it all goes down a death hole. That happened, by the way. Hi, Severin. Here I am. You have not... Can you teach others to be an assassin? Oh, I certainly could, but I won't. Teach me! I swore to the crows that the things they taught me were to remain a secret. And while, yes, they are already angry at me, I'd rather not push things, you see. No, teach me! It's important. You need to learn the arts of the crows in order to slay Darkspawn, do you? You seem to be doing fine as it is. Well, if you are truly yes. assistant, well, let me think about it. The crows are already angry at me, yes? Who knows? Okay. All right, well, we're going to give him time to think about it, by which I mean we'll bug him next time we're at camp. But we're not at camp again now. Hi, Liliana. The stars are out. That's wonderful. It comforts me to know that the stars will remain untouched by the blight. That whatever happens down here, they will shine eternally. Their light undimmed. It's not there technically a true. about that cluster of stars over there. Do you know it? Elindra and her soldier? I cannot say that I have heard this, but please tell it to me. A long time ago, there lived a fair maiden called Elindra. 
She had many suitors, but spurned them all, for she did not love them. Okay. One day, Elindor was sitting by her window in her father's castle, singing and dreaming, when her lovely voice caught the attention of a young soldier. Mm -hmm. Entranced by her song, the soldier drew near to Elindra's window. As their eyes met, he fell in love with her, and she with him. When Elindra told her father about the man she had chosen, he was furious, for Elindra was high-born, but her love nothing more than a common soldier. Does sound bad. Them apart, he had Elindra imprisoned in the highest tower of his castle, and sent her soldier to the wars. Ah. Alas, not a month had passed before news of the soldier's death reached Elindra. Alone in her tower, Elindra wept for her love, and beseeched the gods to deliver her from this cruel world. So earnest was her plea, that the gods themselves were moved. They gathered Elindra into their arms and lifted her high into the heavens, where she became a star. The gods also raised up the soul of Elindra's soldier love, and there he dwells, across the horizon from her. The band of stars between them is a river of Elindra's tears, cried for her lost love. They say that when Elindra has cried enough, she will be able to cross the river to be reunited with her soldier. Hey, constellation myths. Yay. That is a very beautiful story. And that's all we're going to say about that. Because we're not exactly a believer, but the chick we want to boink is. So be nice. This story is one of my favorites. A tale of a love so great and so enduring that it defies death and moves the gods to action. Sometimes I ask myself, does such a love exist? Can it exist? I, you know, if, uh, yeah. I never expected you to say that. It is a pleasant surprise. Well, you know, being around, yeah, secretly I'm a terrible romantic. Why is that a surprise? Ooh, yeah, crack the funny joke. I have to say there is a certain severity to you. Finding a person behind that all is nice. Maybe you should let your softer side show more often. Sometimes following your heart, not your head, leads you to remarkable places. Hooray! I gained some Leliana approval. Hi, Ogren. Stop wasting time, Warden. I'm not here to chat. Oh, you don't even have a dialogue tree. Okay, fine. All right, listen. Okay, Sten, I have good news and bad news. The good news is you now have competition for the role of biggest goddamn asshole in camp who we hate more than anyone else but are taking along because perish the thought that we miss out on sweet, sweet hashtag content. The bad news is is that, to our knowledge, Ogren has never murdered eight people, including some children, and therefore, you have a big lead still. Yes. Speak, then. Then I suggest we move on. I am hardly surprised. <laughs> Very well. Wow. As you wish. Conversations with Sten. Amazing. Hi, Shale. How are you doing? Uh, really? It's a big, heavy sigh. Oh, that. Merely reflecting on the hopeless nature of the task in front of it. The most likely outcome is that it and its companions will become a stain on some rock for the Darkspawn to tread upon. Yeah. I shall be moved to a single tear by the tragedy. Kind of doubt that. Uh, yeah, well, well, you're rocks. Do rocks make stains? I think not. I am made of pure rock skin to core. At best, I can become a pile of dust, but a smear I will definitely not leave behind. Shell's got a That's point. The softer, squishier things like itself and its friends. What's that? Did it hear flapping wings? There may be pigeons nearby. We should be alert. Hmm. Shale disapproves. Fine. Fuck you too, Shale. Morgan, I saw you practicing your fighting pose just now. What do you wish of me? If you must. Uh, hey, tell me about being hunted by the Chantry. 
My mother has been hunted from time to time, yes, by Templar fools like Alistair, which should tell you how successful they generally were. Fair point. Kenneth made a bit of a game of it, in fact. The Templars would come again, and she would look at me and smile and say that the fun was to begin once more. Indeed. Uh, was it fun? I found the game fun. I was too young to understand the truth behind what was happening. Flemeth would warn them once. It was a warning they inevitably failed to heed. And then the true game began. Often Flemeth would use me as bait. <laughs> a little girl to scream and run and lure the Templars deeper into the wilds and to their doom. Ha <laughs> uh, Oh, she used you as bait? That's awful. She's bad. We should kill her. It was a game and I a young girl. If I didn't get to play, I would have been very upset. Thankfully, the wilds is a vast place. Once they found us, Flemeth would simply move us elsewhere and we would be lost within the forest once again. I did not understand the danger we faced until I was much older. I had never heard of apostates or maleficarum. It's a fair point. Um, do you still think that was fun, though? I think that my mother made it fun so that a child did not learn to fear. And I think that it was necessary. There are no trials for apostates, no prisons, no mercy. There are only absolutes, so only survival matters. If the wilds have taught me anything, tis this. First, you must survive. Do you disagree? Uh, actually, yeah, that's, um... You, you've got a really strong point there. <laughs> An enlightened view, or at least an agreeable one. Enough of this talk. Let us return to the task at hand. Okay, fine. I got Morrigan's approval, which is surprisingly difficult to come by these days, actually. Do I have any gifts to give out? I might or might not have gifts to give out. Uh, fancy scroll. Mm, Wilhelm special brew. Ooh, Wilhelm special brew. This seems like an Ogren thing. Ogren! Oh, Ogren. Ogren, here have booze. Bye. My ancestors, this is a wonderful gift. Okay, then. I was right to give you the booze. Great. What else do we have here? A uh, scroll of parchment decorated with fancy gold handles. That seems like a win kind of thing. Hey, win. A generous gift. Thank you ever so much. You're welcome. Might or might not remember to actually do something for you. A uh, remarkable blue-green stone with a pattern like shaped like a turtle shell. Hey, st <laughs> hey, shale, you're made out of rock. Would you like a rock? Ooh, shiny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, shale would like a rock. Excellent job, Gook. Well done. I got ten approval. All right, onward. Gather party, venture forth. And by gather party, venture forth, I mean Ogren uh, and Shale. Yes. And Morgan. Indeed. Sorry, Liliana. Hey, thanks for watching. Here's the stream schedule. If you want to click some buttons, it would help a lot. And if you don't, fine, go away.